From Henry Cejudo's bold prediction for the main event, to Chael Sonnen saying that Drikis Duplessis doesn't stand a chance against Robert Whittaker, these are the predictions for UFC 290. Unlike most fighters, Triple C's got Yair Rodriguez winning against Alexander Volkanovsky. Well, according to Cejudo, El Pantera is the only man who can truly test the great at 145, though the former champ champ didn't stop there, as he even said that the Mexican could be the new king of the featherweight division. How does he think Rodriguez can pull off the massive upset? It's actually pretty simple. Cejudo told reporters that as long as Yair's more strategic with how he uses his insane kicks, he's got the win in the bag. After all, it's a five-round fight, and Volk's got some of the best cardio in the game, so Yair needs to push the pace accordingly. If El Pantera comes in with the right game plan, he has the chance to shock the MMA world, because defeating Volk is next to impossible. But Cejudo's not the only bantamweight predicting a win for the Mexican. In fact, the man himself, Sugar Sean O'Malley, is as well. Sean took to his YouTube channel to talk about the fight, and like Triple C, his prediction's quite surprising. O'Malley said that everyone who thinks Volk's gonna destroy Yair's in for a rude awakening on fight night, because according to him, that's not gonna happen at all. Suga highlighted how Rodriguez has one of the most unique fighting styles in the sport, making him a lethal fighter to go up against. After all, if Yair unleashes those wild knees kicks and spinning elbows, things might look ugly for Alexander. I mean, if the Aussie gets too overwhelmed, he might suffer the same fate as the Korean zombie and get knocked out cold in the blink of an eye. Sean finished by telling his viewers that he might be taking Yair. That being said, most pros are predicting a win for the great, including featherweight contender Arnold Allen. While speaking about the matchup in February 2023, Allen said he doesn't want to bet against a menace like Rodriguez, but at the same time, Almighty thinks it's impossible to root against an OP fighter like Volk who can do it all. Arnold knows what Yair brings to the table, so the Englishman thinks it'll be a close fight, but he believes Volkanovski's gonna outwork Yair, shut him down, and cancel him out. Then, a month later, he talked about how the Aussie's incredibly well-trained, tactical, and has terrific fitness, and added that Volk's gonna dominate the Mexican. Another featherweight contender with the same prediction is Bryce Mitchell, who knows that the fight's gonna be an instant classic, but Thug Nasty's got the great coming out on top because he fights much smarter than Yair. And I've gotta agree with Mitchell on that, since Alex's fight IQ is on another level. Bryce isn't counting the Mexican out, though, as he pointed out that El Pantera's athleticism and speed shouldn't be taken lightly. Yet he's positive that the great's gonna outwork Rodriguez by fighting smart. Plus, Thug Nasty believes that Volk's unreal cardio's gonna be a massive difference maker in the bout. According to him, the Aussie's gonna tire El Pantera out at some point, especially because of how explosive the Mexican's fighting style is, making it that much easier for Volkanovski to get the job done. Though as great as Alexander's cardio and fight IQ are, many pros are giving the edge to the great because of his phenomenal wrestling. When Cody Stamen was asked for his prediction, he mentioned Yair's fight with Max Holloway, where the Blessed Express surprised everyone by taking the fight to the ground. The strategy worked well for Max as he won the fight, so according to the Spartan, Alex is gonna do the same thing, especially because he's one of the best grapplers in the featherweight division. Also, as Stamen said, Volk going in for takedowns is the smartest choice against a crazy striker like Rodriguez. Similarly, Charles Johnson said that Volk shouldn't stand and bang with a striker as deadly as Yair, implying that the great needs to rely on his terrific grappling skills from the get-go. Moving on to the middleweight contender Cody Brundage, he knows that the Aussie has his work cut out for him at UFC 290, but he said, Volk wins off the wrestling sorta how Max did, Whatever happens, the fight's gonna be a certified banger, just like the co-main event between Brandon Moreno and Alexander Pandoha. Who are the pros backing in this bout? Well, some of them predict that Stairman's gonna win the flyweight title. According to Anthony Smith, Moreno's great at mixing his grappling with striking, resulting in his opponents not knowing what he'll do next, but Lionheart doesn't see him having this advantage against the cannibal. The light heavyweight said Moreno can't shoot for takedowns against a dude like Stairman because it'll backfire on him, and that leaves Brandon one-dimensional in the fight so Anthony's got his money on Alexander. Then there's Brundage, who compared the baby assassin situation to Israel Adesanya's. Much like Izzy at UFC 287, Moreno's gonna be up against a guy who's gotten the better of him on more than one occasion. But Cody said that Stylebender's performance in April 2023 made him believe that it's not impossible for Brandon to get the job done. Though at the same time, Brundage said that things are a little different in this case. After all, even when Izzy got KO'd by Alex Pereira, he was doing pretty damn good until Poetan stole the win 
win out of nowhere. As for their first fight in 2016, you could make the case that the judges should have awarded Stylebender the win instead. So winning at UFC 287 only required Israel to make minor changes. But according to Brundage, Moreno didn't have many bright spots in his first two meetings with the Cannibal, meaning that it's going to be way harder for him to pull off what Izzy did. Though it's not as if fighters aren't picking the baby assassin to defend his title. In fact, UFC bantamweight Brian Kelleher believes that Brandon's taken his career to the next level because not only is he the champ, but he's also grown so much as a fighter after facing a legend like Davison Figueiredo four times. Plus, Moreno got the last laugh against the Brazilian at UFC 283. As Brian said, the experience Brandon got from those fights gives him a massive edge. While Kelleher doesn't see the baby assassin stopping Alexander, he predicts a win for Brandon after the fight goes to the judges' scorecards. Then there's Charles Johnson, who's also backing Moreno. But unlike Brian, he thinks the baby assassin touches Stairman up. What's more, Energy thinks the flyweight champ can finish the Brazilian as long as he forgets about those two losses against Alexander. Besides Charles and Kelleher, Drew Dober, Cody Stairman, Joseph Holmes, and many more also have Brandon winning the bout. The betting odds are in favor of the baby assassin as well, but don't be too surprised if Alexander pulls off the upset. I can't say the same for the fight between Still Knox and Bobby Knuckles, though, because it's going to be one of the most one-sided fights of 2023, and it's not as if I'm alone in thinking that. Lightweight fighter Matt Frivola summed up the matchup pretty well, saying that DDP goes out there and swings like a wild man. While such a style makes for entertaining fights, it won't work against a dude as technically sound as the Reaper. Plus, Bobby's got a ton of experience in big fight matches, unlike the South African. So even if Duplessis unleashes a lot of haymakers, Frivola's got Whitaker pulling through and coming out on top. What's more, when the up-and-coming bantamweight, Brady Highstand, was asked for his thoughts, he simply said, Whitaker all day, while Alex Pereira said that the fight's gonna be easy money for the former champ. And unfortunately for him, the last style bender's also predicting a win for the Reaper, even though he's dying to face DDP in the octagon. After all, Izzy's been beefing with Still Knox like crazy since March 2023, and he wants a fresh matchup as well. The only issue is that Whitaker's way better than the South African. In fact, Adesanya said Bobby's either gonna destroy Duplessis in two rounds or dominate him for all three and get the decision victory. Izzy's obviously hoping his prediction is wrong so that he can teach Drykus a lesson in the octagon, but that seems unlikely. To rub salt in DDP's wounds, Chael Sonnen also told fight fans that Drykus is obviously the underdog in this matchup. Then, the American gangster said Whitaker's as good as they come, even calling him one of the greatest middleweights to grace the octagon. And according to Sonnen, the Reaper's a level above Stylebender. That might sound far-fetched, but there's no doubt that Bobby Knuckles is an all-time great. I mean, if Adesanya never joined the UFC, Rob would have easily been the king of the middleweight division. When you have a reputation like that, the American gangster's prediction makes a lot of sense. So from Henry Cejudo's bold prediction for the main event to Chael Sonnen saying that Dreykus Duplessis doesn't stand a chance against Robert Whitaker, those were the predictions for UFC 290.